Welcome back to Second Skin Audio, where we teach you how to treat your sound and heat issues. We're keeping the world cool and quiet, one project at a time. My name is Hamza, and I'll be your host for today's video. Today, we're talking about how to soundproof your floor and your ceiling. Let's go! First, let's talk about the types of noise that you might be dealing with. There's impact noise, and then there's airborne noise. Impact noise comes from your noisy neighbors stomping around the floor above, kids running around, furniture being moved, and anything that physically impacts the entire floor ceiling structure. Airborne noise comes from people talking, a loud TV or music, any sound that isn't physically impacting the floor ceiling structure, but just travels through the air. This kind of noise likes to travel through common flanking paths like vents, can lights and any other gaps in the floor ceiling assembly. Now that you understand the different noise types, let's talk about what makes a good floor ceiling assembly. Similar to wall soundproofing, you need two well-sealed dense barriers. You also need an air gap between those two barriers with insulation filled in the cavity. And you also need to isolate at least one side of the structure, either the floor side or the ceiling side for the best performance against airborne and impact noise. Now, let's run through some scenarios. All right, let's say you have an unfinished ceiling. And in that case, finish your ceiling. Step one will be to screw Rizik 1 clips onto the joists. Then fill the cavity everywhere you can with bat insulation. Then screw 25 gauge hat channels onto the clips. After that, use a 5 8 inch layer of drywall and screw that onto the 25 gauge hat channel. For additional soundproofing, you can use a second layer of 5 8 inch drywall with green glue in between the two layers. See, what you're doing with these sound isolation clips is that you're isolating the ceiling layer from the floor layer with an air cavity in between, greatly reducing the impact noise and the airborne noise that comes through. Now, let's say you only have access to the floor side. In that case, you want to use a rubber underlayment. There are three reasons why we would recommend a rubber underlayment as opposed to the alternatives out there. Number one is that it's very cost effective. Number two is that it's environmentally friendly, being made from recycled old tires. Number three, it's very high performing and durable, unlike other alternatives like cork, which can lose its performance and compression over time. Using a rubber underlayment is a great way to isolate the floor from the rest of the floor ceiling assembly, further boosting performance against impact and airborne noise. The underlayment that we would recommend is our underblock, which is the standard version, and then we have a premium version, which is the underblock HD, which is mainly used in commercial applications. You'd also want to use acoustical sealant to seal the gaps between the underlayment and the walls. Now, let's say you have access to both the floor and the ceiling side, then do both. Treating both sides will give you the best results. So combine the strategies that we discussed on the floor side and the ceiling side to reduce airborne and impact noise. Now let's talk about some don'ts when trying to soundproof your floor and ceiling. The first don't is using acoustical panels on your ceiling. Acoustical panels do not block sound. They absorb sound within a space. So if you put acoustical panels on your ceiling, you're just absorbing the sound within the space on the ceiling side of your floor ceiling assembly. Another don't is using canned lights in your ceiling. When you use can lights in your ceiling, you're basically putting big holes for airborne noise to go straight through. Again, when soundproofing, you want a completely well-sealed and dense barrier to block sound from coming through. Another don't is using any thickness less than 5 8 inch thick drywall. You definitely want to use the thickest drywall possible, which is 5 8 of an inch. Another don't is using drop ceiling tiles. The problem with drop ceiling tiles is that they aren't thick or dense enough to actually block sound. And so sound is going straight through those ceiling tiles and going straight up into the structure and into adjacent rooms. So remember, when soundproofing your floor and ceiling, you wanna have two well-sealed barriers. You also need an air gap, fill the cavity with insulation or sound absorption material. And you also need to isolate at least one side of the floor ceiling structure, either the floor side or the ceiling side. Doing these will give you the best performance against airborne and impact noise. And excellent, now you have a fully soundproof floor and ceiling. But what about your walls? 
Watch this video next to learn how to soundproof your wall to create a fully soundproof room. Thanks for watching.